Hey guys, Shot here. Hope you're doing well. In this video series, I'm going to be talking about the hole punching section of the PAT. Now, like the cube counting and angle ranking sections, this is another one you have to blaze through. And not only that, this is also one you have to get 100% on because it's pretty straightforward. And just like the other sections, with enough practice and proper technique, you can really master it. So first, I'll go over the basics of what this section is all about. Then I'll teach you guys the proper technique to approach questions with. And finally, we'll run through some practice prompts together. All right, let's get into it. All right, so before we go any further, it's a good idea to actually see what a hole punching question looks like. So I put one here for us to quickly talk about. Pretty much the concept is this, they give you a square piece of paper, they perform a few folds on it, then they punch a hole somewhere on the paper. So then the question becomes, where will all the hole punches be once the paper is unfolded? This is what we have to figure out, and they give you option choices with black dots here being hole punches. So what we're going to do is first analyze every one of these folds, and then we'll work backwards to find out where all the holes will be. Okay, let's first focus on fold one, and I've blown it up here at the bottom so we can better visualize everything. Pretty much they took the two bottom corners here, one here and the other one here, and folded the paper along this red crease line that I've made. And what you get is this, which is what they've shown here in fold number one. Now, they'll never show you the full piece of paper like I have here. They'll always just show you the first fold, but we can obviously assume this is what's happening. You can also see this very clearly in the 3D simulator I've put here on the right. I'll have it pop in and out just for a visual aid, but you should really get in the habit of trying to visualize these folds mentally. All right, let's move on to fold number two. This one is also pretty simple. I've shown it here once again. It's pretty much the same fold. They again grab these two corners right here, one and two and folded it upwards along this new crease which I've shown with the red line. And this is the resulting piece of paper. Now fold three is a little bit more interesting. This time they only took the bottom right corner of the paper right here and they brought it to this point all the way here. This means the fold crease was diagonal as shown again by the red line here. And again, obviously this is what you would get as a result. And this is actually the last fold, as you can see here. Um, this is the stage at which they will actually punch a hole at a random spot on the paper. And in this case, they punched it right here, which would correspond to this, this cell right here. So what we're going to do now is actually unfold the piece of paper. So I'll have it in 2D on the left, and on the right, I'll have it with the 3D simulator so we can see exactly what's happening. So to mentally unfold this, we pretty much have to reverse the folds along the same creases that we already talked about. And for the last fold, we use this diagonal crease. So that's exactly where we're going to fold back. We grab this tip again right here, and we bring it all the way back down to this corner where it used to be. And this is what we get. Notice how the whole punch is reflected along the fold crease right here. This will pretty much always happen. All right, let's continue unfolding. So again, this is what we are left with at this point, and now we have to grab the two corners right here, one here, and another one here, and fold down along this crease right here, again shown in red. And this is what we get. So we're almost there. Now, the last unfold is pretty much a repeat of the, the one we just did. You just take the two corners here, one here, and one here, and you bring both of them down to the respective corners. Uh, so again, the line of crease will be the one right here shown in red, and the final piece of paper will look like this. So this shows the final product, and as you can see, that first initial hole punch that they made up here left us with four hole punches in total. So the answer, let's see, would be C, would be C in this case. All right, now that we've actually seen what a hole punching question looks like and what the concept is, we can talk a little bit more about the details. 
And to be completely honest, guys, this section is pretty straightforward. So there's only one thing I want to talk about, and that's the grid system. I didn't really talk about it while we went through the example question just now because I really wanted you guys to focus on the folding and unfolding of the paper. At the end of the day, that's what this section comes down to. Now with that said though, the grid system is also important because it sets the foundation for the fold and the hole punches. The grid system is essentially what the square piece of paper that they give us is lying on. It's a 4x4 four four grid, meaning it's divided into 16 equal size squares. These squares represent all the possible locations for a hole punch. Now it's always useful to have this in mind because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how the paper is folded. Once you unfold it, hole punches can only exist in these squares. And that's a very important note that I want you guys to put in your minds and never forget. So pretty much moving forward, always imagine our square piece of paper on top of the grid system. And the reason I think it's so important is because sometimes the hole punches that are made are right on the edge of the paper, like so and they appear as half hole punches. So this sometimes throws students off, but if you actually look closely, you can see that the hole punch was still made directly on one of the uh, squares of the grid system. It just so happens that our square piece of paper was only half on this cell, so it appears like a half hole punch. So again, don't get thrown off by half hole punches because I'll say it again, it doesn't matter how the paper is folded or punched, at the end of the day, once the paper is unfolded, you can only have full hole punches on 16 possible locations. And you can see the second part of that statement right here. Once the, once the paper was unfolded, uh, it revealed a full hole punch on one of the squares, and it looks like it was on this square right here. All right, guys, that's really the takeaway point for this video. We're going to get into more specifics later, but for the purpose of this video, I just wanted to familiarize you guys with what this section is all about and the foundation on which it's built on. Thanks for watching and see you next time.